service welcome up. Back. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back to Tales from the Service Industry. Welcome back. We missed you all. Happy Taylor's Tortured Poets Society release album day. Other than that, that what else is going mouthful. on? <laughs> well, you know, once again, we have balance here at the table because opposite corners. She's all into it and I could Swift care less. Days. I was okay, Gwen, on a scale of like zero to a hundred, how much of a Swifty are you? Zero. Oh, sorry. That was answer your answer for that was me. Answer. No, that was Bill's answer. No, that answer. was just my answer. It was a knee jerk reaction. My apologies. I was at like twenty four percent. Okay. Gosh, Not quite guys. even a quarter. I follow all the conspiracy theories. I don't know if you guys have heard about all the QR codes being posted and how each QR code is in a different major city and they like everyone all in those cities is scanning them and it gives you a letter and then all those letters everyone's combining them from like around the world and it's spelling something out you guys have no idea so wait all like the, the stuff letter that goes into is this. like cryptic and you have yes. to decode the message she is Tay Tay's under the easter eggs she is a mastermind yeah. okay not to quote the song but it's true that's her a song? or her publisher yes. No, this is no, all her, her and all of her brain. She makes all this crap up. Masterpiece. Huh? I would say I may be a 26% Swifty. Mm. On a scale of 1 to 100? Like you can yeah. appreciate. I'm 150. <laughs> 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 like you can appreciate, you see it, but you're also like, eh. I, okay, no. If you know most on, of the songs. Maybe a little bit more than that. I know the songs. It's so funny. Uh, so eh. um, at the hotel, we're changing up our uh, like public area music. Yes. So in one area, like next to the spa, it's like all instrumental, classic until like 10 a.m. It's very like relaxing. People are walking around early mornings. Then it kind of changes throughout the day, but twice today. Oh, maybe it was on purpose. I heard two different Taylor Swift songs today in the hotel. Do you know who's currently in my lobby? Not Taylor. Currently standing in my lobby at this very a moment. A cutout? Of Taylor oh, Swift. A cutout of, of Taylor Swift. Of course it is. Life size. Who put that out? Me and my boss did. <laughs> That's, that is your lobby aesthetic. Okay. Yes. But <laughs> how many members and guests have f- defiled the penguin? Ooh. We are protecting Taylor with our lives. Good throwback. So back. not yet. Oh, what? <laughs> That's a great throwback. That's, that was a great throwback. That, that was that was a long range yeah. throwback. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Not yet. She's literally next to the front desk. She, and at night we bring her in. Like everyone's taking you very good. You put her good, to bed. Yes. We're taking very good <laughs> care of Taylor Swift. <laughs> We're using Do you have her. photo evidence for the group? I have photo evidence of my boss posing with her before we put her out. Yes. Okay. okay. Or I think you need to like text your night audit right now and be like, I need a photo of Tay Tay. I, I may have to do that. She's next to our, our goals poster. Our goals in the poster. Back. <laughs> but she's currently in the lobby. She is in the lobby. Full size T Swift. And then we have a tiny Taylor. It came with a tiny one. So we taped it to the back of when our. When you say full size, are we talking life size? Check her like, out. Her height, like her height, her measurements. I didn't measure I mean, it. I think your general manager is oh. pretty dainty. But Taylor is tall. I think she's like 5'9". Something like that. But yeah, so on totally hotel hospitality mode, she is currently in my lobby. We Have, are celebrating. But why? It's a great question. Our hotel brand is doing like a promo slash raffle drawing mm-hmm. for to get Era's tickets. It's for Swift a Era. Yeah. yeah. So there's like promos. It's kind of like a sweepstake yeah, thing that exactly. you can enter. A great marketing tool for the brand. So 100%. Swifty's in the lobby and then we have a little Swifty on the desk and people like... A little Swifty? Yeah, it's like a little Swifty. <laughs> Like, it's a miniature version of that. We we call her Tiny Taylor. (laughs) T.T. T.T. So we have a T.T., a Tiny Taylor on the front desk. And then we didn't put any signage up with T. Swift. So the guests just come up and be like, why is Taylor Swift in your lobby? (laughs) Well, I'm not sure if you knew, but we have reward. this contest. We have this promotion contest raffle thing. And if you sign up to be a member with us, you can enter for tickets. Nerd. And we're getting signed up with how it. Many, how many of your members have been like, oh, my God, this is so cool. I just want to take do a picture. Know, do you know how many people are taking pictures with T-Swift? Yeah. Are do you know t- how many of them are guys? 90%. Shut up. 90%. Because they wish they could get that. Everyone's taking they pictures wish. with T-Swift in the lobby. They wish they were Travis Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not, because <laughs> I think both of us just had that at the same time. I mean, who else had the ick on the Super Bowl? I loved it. I'm like, you, you know, I loved it. at least get a lineup. It, up. it was the Viva Las Vegas for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, that part was super cringe. Yeah. But. I know this is such old news in pop culture, but 
I'm glad your your brand and your hotel itself is doing something about the okay, celebrating this great release. What are you gonna do with the cutout afterwards? Gonna is she gonna live your in boss your is office? gonna take her home? It's funny, my boss called dibs on her. <laughs> I knew it. Of course, freaking knew it. Anyway, that was our plug okay. for T Swift. You can cut most of that out. <laughs> Probably will. But you know what? You should keep Tiny but Taylor. Yes, Red came to me when I looked. You here. should keep little TT. TT is yours. Oh, you're right. I you need to call dibs, dibs on TT. Mm-hmm. Dibs on TT. I'm excited about that. So, anyways, how's okay. everything going with work with you guys? Other than you know celebrating T Swift's album release, which I know we're all doing. Now I am. <laughs> Whether we like it or not. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm surprised it's not playing in the background during this whole episode. We're no. Like, good. He- Bill needed it. No, Bill had a TT glass. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I had a, I had a TT glass. <laughs> um, but uh, as of this recording, we're, oh, I don't know, five weeks out from Memorial Day. Mm, nice. Who's excited? Mm. Ugh, I'm not. Guess what's that weekend? Memorial rave. Day? <laughs> Anime Con. Yeah. But those, those well, I'm excited for you. Those people behave though, right? Or no? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. But it's still, it's a long weekend. Yeah. It's a lot. They're a lot better than the ravers though. 100%. And raver staff. But I've only had one anime con and it really wasn't that bad. Yeah. But <laughs> different groups are like different kinds of like hectic and annoying in different ways. We just had a group recently of firefighters. Oh, and mm. I'll tell you. They were eye candy. They were sweet. They were polite. Sorry, Gwen, did you, did you get them a, on the drive? Did you get a phone oh, call to go visit her? I <laughs> was just going to say, why didn't I get a phone call? I'm sorry. You should have met them on the drive. Oh. Hair done. I was on the desk. Wet t-shirt blouse. I know. Like, I wish it would have been raining that day. The good desk. heels. The good heels. She can be good, on the, the desk. The ones. Yes. They were so nice. So polite. <laughs> But do you know what drove me insane about them? And this is the second time we've had a firefighter group do this. Mm-hmm. Six In pack a good abs. way or a bad way? Bad. Washboard abs. They love dropping weights. Oh, oh. yeah. And I, we went up oh. there so many times. You've talked like, about this. What floor yes, is your gym on? The second. Yeah. Because this is the second time. And I thought it was a fluke the first group. And then just and my my office is like nearly right below so i'm just sitting there working that and it like scares the living daylights out of well, me well you don't matter are there any other guest rooms right there though you need See, to block I don't those say out. anything they just do that and i just roll my eyes but other guests are complaining saying it sounds like someone's moving furniture i thought it was an earthquake and we went over there constantly and kept yelling at them be like guys stop dropping weights they don't Ooh, care uh, no they they kept going at one point we shut down the gym at 11 o'clock at night because yeah. it's supposed to be 24 hours a day but they were keeping everybody up with dropping weight so we shut Did down you the gym let them know? Yeah. we kicked them out say okay gym's closed <laughs> locked oh it up goodness but my property has that a lot because our uh, basketball court is conveniently over all the admin offices. That's hilarious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't really notice it because my office is next to the basketball court. So if a ball like goes awry and hits the wall, it's sometimes like right at my head. And oh, my I God. I get scared. <laughs> like through the wall. Oh, my God. Um, but at least I don't have to like hear it bouncing like from the floor above me at all. But you can't see it coming. You just hear and feel it yeah yeah there's yeah. occasionally like a grunt with it oh my oh, god like, i love Ugh! that for you bang. <laughs> that's awesome here I, I got another good one for you mm. so our fitness center second floor guess what's on the bottom floor restaurant just, just guess not the bell closet, i know the answer that would it's be funny Miss B, don't i'm not you know where you're supposed to be the most relaxed when you're staying at the resort? Spa. The spa. No. <laughs> the treatment rooms. No. Are directly <laughs> below the fitness center. So uh, we, are there lots of complaints? We, I was we just moved, say, are there so a lot we of had complaints? a lot of complaints previously in the old facility of where the dumbbells were. I would, certain times of day where young adults, teenage boys, college boys, would just all like gang around the dumbbells and grunt and drop the weights. I would have to babysit them and be like, maybe you need to go down and wait (laughs) because you're dropping your dumbbell. So now new facility, move the dumbbells. But okay, my, my idiot. <laughs> yeah, I put the med balls over the treatment. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I put, no, those were, it's awful. Oh, I put the med balls. I put our functional room over the treatment area. That's funny. Yeah, where people are jumping up and down, slamming, not dumbbells, but 20 pound med balls. <laughs> 
So and the, it's like the unexpected. whole construction. The whole construction. Yeah. I was like, no, we moved the dumbbells. It won't be a problem. I promise. Won't be a problem. All the therapists come up to me. They're like, Liz, it's worse. What did you do to make it worse? And I'm like, <laughs> well, the dumbbells are removed. I'm like, oh, the treatment. It's not just that one room. It it goes and there's you know That's a hilarious. dozen of them. Let's say. I fucked up, but it's a great facility, and I get compliments every day. So <laughs> that's so funny. I love that for you. So I don't really care. Eh, they'll live. They will. Just turn up the massage music louder. They should. <laughs> they should. It's a Beethoven concert. <laughs> but Bill, do you have to hire seasonals for your hotel for the summer mm. season? No. Oh, you're so lucky, Miss B. No, we're the yes. same year round. I have to hire 10. I'm doing good, though. I have six in the pipeline. Nice. That's good. Yeah. Don't you have so. a lot of returnings for summer, though? Only three this year. I'm kind of in that era, pun intended, of... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I got it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> of, like, my first summer, all of those people are now, like, graduated college and 22, 23, and, you know, have actual full-time year-round jobs oh, okay so now i'm in my you know second tier of these kids so i'm i'm creating a new batch of returning okay. seasonals okay fresh brood yeah so only three returners and then the okay. rest are new but some of them are in high school and can start like weekends in may and hopefully by memorial day they're not so green okay but any of your returning applicants, are they like, is this their career? No. 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 This is like a minimum wage or close to minimum wage seasonal grunt job. It's great, though. Like, the property is beautiful. You get to hang out outside you by the water. You have to fold freaking pool towels on the pool deck looking at the ocean and like, oh, you have to clean a boat? Boo-hoo. Oh, you have to stand in the fitness center and fold those towels in the AC and like clean some equipment? Oh, darn. Like, it's it's not a hard job. Signed up for that as my second job. But the service expectations are very, very high. I could do it in my sleep. Yeah, you could. Blindfolded. You could. On a bad day. But this summer, we are elevating our service instead of just having sunscreen, like, the bottle on a table <gasps> in the corner. You're rubbing them on people. No. Wait, you have them just sitting out? Sunscreen bottles? Like a gallon bottle, yeah. With a pump. Is that legal? Why, yeah. why would it not why be? Why wouldn't it be? I'm offering amenity. Reasons? No, it's just, like it's a pump. It's like ketchup. Yeah. It's not like you're sticking your fingers in the mayonnaise no. jar. It's like... Pete, have you seen what people do to the ketchup no. gallons? Well, oh, God. Gross. No, we have little like two ounce cups next to it. I like that. But it's not going gonna... in your mouth. Ask my child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this summer, instead of just having the gallon out, I do this begrudgingly, but you know higher level of service we are going to as guests sit down we are going to be walking around with water and cups of sunscreen and offering them a towel and a water and welcome would you like sunscreen to make it you know interesting very fancy resort vibes instead of casual like hey how's it going throw them towel okay i love that actually okay yeah, I love it too. If I'm sure your kids are going to love it. <laughs> I didn't have to train 18-year-olds to do it. It's going to be great. Was this your idea or new mommy's idea? What do you think? New mommy. It's like butler service at the pool. Yeah. They want to change our uniforms too. And I, I had to like fully explain like I get cheap uniforms. We go through a lot of them. I like this style. I like this cut. You can change the color, but I want to keep the actual polo. Yeah. What did she want to change it to? Like a, a button down blazer and a she did, suit. She did piece. order um, very nice. Tuxedo tails. Yes. Uh, she Duck ordered tails. very nice like straight down polos. Do you know the brand straight down? No. It's a golf brand. Okay. But, you know, let's take in comparison. My uniform polos cost 20 bucks. Right. Full logoed, embroidered. And these are probably like 55 wholesale. Um, yeah. They were like very nice I want to say red, white, and blue, like little stripes. Mm. It was a very good looking polo. She tried to get the valet team to wear them. How and they you, were like, no. How do you think that went over? They never put them on or found them in the trash. Yeah. So she's trying to pawn off these polos to other departments. Because <laughs> you just said straight up no. Uh, I was not offered the polos, but I put my foot down on my expectations for my team before I could be voluntold to do something. Nice. Yeah. But that's, so, all, that's all I got. Just gearing up for summer. Let okay. me understand then. Like, nobody respects this new person? Mm. Like, if you're told to wear something, 
Like new wh- mommy's coming on pretty strong. No, Gwen, I fully agree with you. I don't know what the conversations were, but I think the entire team of like 30 guys just were like, we're not wearing that. But like, you don't get a choice if that's your uniform. I'm sorry. I just, I can't comprehend that. Uh, me just, neither. Just saying no to your boss. It's like, uh well, I don't know if it was the manager that like told okay. the GM like, ooh, I don't know. All I know is polos were bought. They refused. And they're being pawned off. They're being tempted <laughs> to be pawned off. Just sell them in the gift shop. They'll go. Yeah. But I said, okay, if we're revisiting uniforms for my Seven team. Seven years later. <laughs> stuff Seven at that hotel. It's there. like all branded with the hotel. It sells in the gift shop. All their stuff freaking sells. Oh, yeah. We can't Branded keep Branded stuff slides off the shelf. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. We have these that. specific hats that are like so expensive that just have like our property's initial on them and they sell like hotcakes. I want to say they're like $65 hats. Yeah. You know, those like Jersey long sleeve shirts, as soon as those got stocked to the property with like the logo on it, they had one for the club side and the resort nearly sold out immediately. Bill, I, I think you had a thought. I did. I had an a-hole of the week. There we go. Yes. Let's get into it. There was an employee. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I love this. On an employee rate. Yes. Booked for three nights. Let's okay. go. Dipped out on the second day. Okay. What do you think would be second the reason? Second day or after the second night? No, no. Second day. Literally so after the first Has night. only stayed one night. Yes. Okay. And dipped out of a three nights day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why? Arrested. Mm-hmm. No. Dead. No, no. Were they local to you? Like, did, did they reside local to your hotel? Eight hours away. Oh. oh. So this know. was not one of those like, oh, we just decided to go home afterwards. Yeah, that's what things. I was thinking. Were they scheduled to work? No idea. Haven't reached out to their GM yet. There we go. Keyword. Okay. Um, did they claim a family emergency to get out of paying? No. They never they checked left, out. And they never they never checked, checked out. out. Nope. Yeah. So do you charge them? We are. I would. Yeah. And you didn't there's check a reason out. why. Okay. No, no. Pray tell. The reason is not because of the fact that they didn't check out. What they do to the room. Aha. Now we're on the right track. Oh. Broke oh, the TV. No. So we have two rooms side by side. Two rooms. No, no, no. The employee oh. only had one. Oh, okay, okay. But they're they're okay. I so hypothetical room numbers, let's just say one thousand. And 1,001. The oh, guest in room. I know where you're going with that. The guest in room 1,001 says to the front desk, my carpet's wet. <gasps> they flooded the room? Uh, huh. That was rude. Look look at this travesty. I tried. Oh. Hey, that's as much as I have. Man. You're my a-hole of the week. <laughs> <laughs> to give our listeners backstory, Gwen handed me a bottle of wine with a sip left and said, have the rest. <laughs> I can give it to myself. I'll take it back. Just chug it. <laughs> chug it all. No, this might be a this might be a two bottle night. Take it. Let's okay. It. Anyway, Bill. So they flooded to. the room. So anyway, guest in room one zero zero one complains that their carpet's wet. We go in to check the room. It butts up against room one thousand. Yeah. We go into room one thousand that's occupied. Knock, knock, knock. Nobody answers. Knock, knock, knock. Nobody D&D answers. On the door? No D and D. Open the door, no personal effects in the room whatsoever. Keys on the table, about a three quarters of an inch of water <gasps> through the entire room from the bathroom to the front door. Toilets overflowing and running. Just running. And they just left. And they just dipped out. They said, Oh, shit, I'm going to get well, in trouble. I'm going to leave. No. Bullshit. Mm, Bull. I'm going to call BS. 100%. There's no such thing as coincidences. Not nope. when it's not, not in this case. Not when it's not actively not flowing. It's not. That's crazy. Yeah. So was there shit on the ground too? No, it's literally just all water. Not the one that I heard about today. No, no, that's a different one. Oh, unrelated. But ironically, the one that you heard about is actually the room right next door to the room that got flooded. <laughs> I oh. figured when we were talking 1000s and... Uh, yeah, but it's on the other side of the flooded room. Is uh-huh. this near the bees? No. Oh, the bees. Those, those are your bee holes. My bee holes of the week. Mm-hmm. We had a bee swarm that flew through the hotel. <laughs> so you're having a crazy week. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's every week. <laughs> Thank God tomorrow's Friday. Oh my God. Yeah, we had the uh, beekeeper out to vacuum up all of our bees Isn't in the that queen. Cool? I, I, I mean, it's the bee swarms are scary. Don't you remember when the pool deck had one last summer? And they attached to an umbrella. Yeah, I remember I th- you telling I us that. I think we I talked about that. that yeah. Wow. 
it's crazy for like two minutes until they find the Ooh. queen and then swarm into a big bee ball. That's crazy. And then it's pretty chill. And then you call the beekeeper and they do their thing. They're mm-hmm. very impressive and knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Did you I... know when you sent that, because it was, you know, during the work day, I was in a meeting and I saw that and I was like, oh my God. And I showed everyone I was sitting with at work at the meeting. I'm like, guys, I know that we're dealing with some stuff, but at least we're not dealing with this. And I'm showing them. They're like, oh my God. <laughs> it wasn't even that big though. It looked huge. I mean, that it was, was, it was like the size of a volleyball. It was sizable. That was big. Maybe, maybe a basketball. It was like a volleyball. I'm trying to think of a bee pun. No, I It was unbelievable. You. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe you had to deal with it. Sorry, go on. Oh Sorry. God. This hotel that I'm at, though, has had these swarms move through multiple times. So this is like the third since I've been here. But we've had multiple issues where they've literally moved in and created hives. There's a like a wall-mounted box for a communications thing on the top of the roof. Mm-hmm. And they had built a hive in there. Dang. And there was... There, on the roof. Yeah, oh and the gosh. hive has been removed. But there's still like honey that drips out of this communications box. That's wild. And so bees still keep coming back or... No, it's all sealed, but it still keeps leaking out. Ugh. That's wild. Well, I could imagine, especially a change of temperatures too. Mm-hmm. It'll just, you know hot vents getting blown on or something Mm -hmm. and it just melts and drips i think we've learned a couple valuable things on this podcast one of them tip your housekeeper and two see something say something oh Mm. thank you thank you so much safety committee member are you part security is that hat on right now (laughs) i should have my badge like right here it's (laughs) No, here's the thing. You never know, especially with associate accounts. Yeah. You never know. But it's better to say something because worst case scenario, it's like, cool, we got your memo. Two thumbs up. Yeah. If you don't say something, we're going to think you broke the toilet having a really bad bathroom incident. Or it's going to be the latter where we do a full investigation and then we find out that, oh, you're not as great as you think you are. And then you either get a warning or your manager gets notified or you get fired. Or even not as much as getting fired, but maybe like your privileges get revoked revoked for X amount of time, Mm -hmm. if not indefinitely. And it could have been like it was just truly like an engineering issue. Like maybe it wasn't their fault and they just got scared. To his defense, it's like, you know, if it's an accident, you say something. Of course you say something. Them leaving was the the worst thing they could have done for themselves and the property. And they think if they ignore it, it's just going to go away. It's like, no. It's like when your mom tells you to clean your room and you're a kid and you just shove everything under the the bed. bed. Like the mess is still there. You just Mm -hmm. can't see it. They they left, so they couldn't see the issue. So how much damage is in the room? Do you have to replace anything? Mm, No, not yet. Or just a lot of extraction of water. It depends on how long it takes for the carpet to dry and if it sours. Yeah. I mean, you're losing room revenue. Yep. Mm, theoretically, yeah. But our occupancy is low Let's enough just that we're yes, not. Let's just say yes, you are. No, I'll be honest with it. Um, I had another bee hole of the week, too. Let's get into it. <laughs> Let's go. It's been a week, man. Yeah. What can I say? Got a survey response today that I'm reading it going, oh, my God, this is terrible. Why didn't my team do anything? Blah, 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 blah. I'm immediately thinking that we failed to squelch a party, a noise issue, whatever, because this guest tells us that they checked out four days early because of how loud their neighbors were. So initially, I'm like, okay, well, if it got reported, why didn't my team do anything? Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. If it was so loud, why didn't you just ask to transfer rooms? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, still on the main thought that my team should have done something more to squelch the noise, right? (sighs) We got a second follow-up review from the same person, different story. And now I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is just not meshing. So math I, ain't math. Math ain't mathing. Math ain't mathing. So I went back to our pass alongs and I searched for the room number and here it is. Okay. Now, this is what I thought was funny. And this is what kind of teed me off is the second review that we got, the guest clearly noted that they got horrible service, that they had left some items behind in the room, that they called the hotel our staff was very disinterested in helping them and how horrible the customer service was. Now you would think, okay, that's a service failure on the employee side, correct? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. No, when I went through the pass ons and I'm reading through what happened the night that this person came back to get their belongings, night should be the first indicator. Mm -hmm. They called half a dozen times between the hours of 11 p.m. and midnight demanding their belongings back and then came to the hotel because they were told that they had to call during normal business hours right. for lost and found. This is on the day that they had departed at midnight to find their lost and found Wait. items. Yeah, why? because they wanted it back at midnight. And that's our problem. So we earned the survey because they came back at midnight to get their belongings. Love and they that. just didn't Dicks. listen to your staff when they said you can come back during normal business hours. Yeah, all of it was over a t-shirt. Oh. A t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And you got a failed survey for a t-shirt. No, they got a failed survey because these people are dicks. Well, yeah. Technically, it was two, but yes. Two t-shirts or two Double dicks? dicks? Two dicks. Two, sur two surveys. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> just clarifying okay. no, the for two our dicks, audience. No, the two dicks was uh, Ms. B's story last week. Double dicks. What story was that? The guy that uh, was in the room with the two girls. They had the magnums. Ah, remember now. The BBC? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. It's not a week. There's been a lot going on at work, but most of it's like the usual BS. And this one was kind of fun. A little different and mm -hmm. a little sad. So this was on Monday. Today is Thursday. My desk agent, it was her second day back from maternity leave. So she came back on Sunday. Aww. Monday is her second day back. Yeah. She's only back part time. Oh, kind she? of weaning like into it. Into yeah, it. totally. Yeah. Don't blame her. So she comes back. I haven't even been there an hour. She comes back. She's like, well, that was weird. And I'm like, what? She's like, someone just told me I'm racist. I'm like, what did you say? She's like, I didn't say anything. She's like, I looked up from my computer. And she said, she told her, you're being racist. And the girl was like, I I'm sorry, what? She's like, you know, if my husband was here, you wouldn't be treating me like this. And Kelly's like, I'm really confused. I haven't said anything. And she's like, well, I just see the way you're looking at me and you're treating me different than other oh, people. Gosh. And Kelly is like blinking because she's just confused. The lady had asked her a question. So Kelly had looked down to look at her computer to look into her question. And then so she just stormed off and went to talk to someone else. And Kelly's just kind of like, okay. And goes back and tells me that. I'm like, wow, what a nut. I'm like, what room number was she in? 614. We're like, okay, when we go look it up, there's notes on the reservation. It says guest has extreme, in all caps, PTSD. Proceed with caution. And we were like, what does that even mean? Mm. So we were like, that's weird. So I'm like, put a second note on there. <laughs> Doesn't like Kelly. I think she's racist. And Kelly's like, ha ha. No. So we're like, okay, that's weird. Whatever. We're moving on, right? Just another day in the life. And a few days later, I get in at 7, 30 minutes into my shift, get an email, and it's from the exec chef. And I recognize the room number. Click it. It is a novel. <laughs> a novel. Your chef wrote a novel about this guest. And by the way, chef doesn't write emails. Oh. And by the way, no, why would he? He's busy cooking. Yeah. She. Ooh, love is, that female power. She is a, a boss, but also she is so not confrontational. She's got like the aggression of a kitten. Okay. She's awesome what she does, but she's not out there fighting guests. That's not her thing. So it was 730 in the morning. So the F and B leaders hadn't gotten in yet. And there was a guest giving a really hard time to a server. So much so the chef got pulled out. And the chef came to see like, what is going on? And the woman is going off on chef saying, I'm being mistreated. Blah, 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 blah. And chef's like, ho, 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 ho. What's going on? What happened? And she's like, well, I was sitting here and I told the server that I didn't want her to talk to me, that I just wanted to get my food and she didn't need to speak to me because I had mouth surgery and I don't feel like talking. To which the server said, that's okay. You don't need to speak, but you'll listen. Uh -huh. And then continued to talk to her. And we were all like, what? It didn't jive. It didn't seem. It didn't make sense. That no. didn't make sense for us. No, it didn't. But she didn't have the background from the survey. She's like, I'm so sorry. That's really out of character for her. I'll, I'll go speak to her. Is there something I can get you in the meantime? She's like, no, I just want to be left alone. And I just want to eat. I'm just like, okay, got it. And so she goes and tells the server, like, first of all, like, okay, like, don't go over and help her anymore. She seems to be really upset. But can you let me know what happened? And Kelly's like, yeah, like she just went off. She just walked into the restaurant, didn't wait to be seated, walked straight in, went straight to the buffet, 
got a plate and sat down. And you know, we have brand policies. We're supposed to go up. We're supposed to offer you a drink. We're supposed to pour some coffee. Like yeah. there's stuff that we have to do. And she's like, so we whenever do have to speak to you when you're sitting in our restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wild it, concept. And but. So she's like, so, you know, I, I went over there. I asked her if she wanted anything to drink and she ignored me. And then, so she was like, oh, just let me know. Are you looking? And then she kept trying to talk to her. And then the lady, she's like, she snapped at me and said, I don't want you speaking to me. But it's like, I'm, I'm really sorry. I just, you know, I have to give you these options. And, you know, if you're ordering from the buffet, can I get your room number? Like, I have to have this information. And she's like, no, if you're not able to talk, I will go ahead and just let you know these things. And like said something to that effect that was like, okay, if you don't want to talk to me or, you know, you're not able to speak, that's okay. I'll just give you this information so you have it. And then, you know what I mean? I'm confused because this guest had no problem talking to the chef. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Went off. And by the way, she's been talking to the front desk every day with something. No, no problem speaking. Weird. And we were all like. Okay, but then the lady left the table for a bit, but left like a water bottle. So it seems like she had left, right? But her water bottle was still there. Pull the plate. We table, bust the table. Table was bust and cleared. Woman comes back and then becomes enraged. Where is my food? you guys took my food you're trying to kick me out you don't want me i see her you know she's trying to get rid of me but goes just loses her shit more and chef's just like whoa whoa whoa! we thought you just forgot your water bottle you've been gone a while we apologize we thought you'd left she's like but just go ahead help yourself like this isn't all you can eat like buffet yeah like she's like go make another she's like plate i'm very sorry you can go ahead and i'm not hungry she's like okay well if, if you'd like to she's like i'll go ahead and remove the breakfast charge from your bill Go how to make yourself a plate. Like, I'm not hungry. Okay, regardless, I'm going to remove it. No, I want to pay for it. <laughs> and the chef just like... Hmm. This is somebody that just wants to fight. So when you first... I know you're not done with your story, but when you first started with the interaction with the front desk, I literally wanted to say, was she deep sea fishing? There was just a few marbles loose in a jar. Like, I don't know what's like, going on in there. for compensation. Mm-hmm. She was, okay. We didn't get it, but she sure never asked for compensation. By the way, still hasn't. And she wanted to pay for her breakfast. Yeah. So chef's just kind of like, okay, okay. Trying to deal with like, I, I, I won't remove it, but you can feel free <laughs> to hang out here. If you get hungry and you'd like more food, go ahead and help yourself. And like, hmm. And so sits there, then gets up, goes and get more food. And then the server goes over to refill her drink, to which the lady loses it and says she's harassing her. Like a water or a coffee? Yeah. To which the server then goes back there and be like, she wants to talk to you again. And she's like, did you go over to her? She's like, her drink was empty. I was refilling it. And the chef just like, where's the F&B manager? Why am I doing this? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. So she goes over there and is like, hi you wanted to speak with me she's like she's blatantly harassing me she's like trying to and chef just like oh my god and she's like you know what i've already removed it from your bill i hope you have a great day but i really don't think there's anything else we can help you with and the lady's like oh and leaves and they're like oh thank god but this novel of an email just going over this and i'm just like wow like even till my boss gets in after eight and responds well that's a way to start the day (laughs) and i was like you did great chef like I'm so sorry you had to deal with that and puts in there, Miss B and I will figure out a strategy to talk to the guest. And I'm Thanks. Like, Ugh. Thanks exactly. for that, boss. You were, you were just voluntold. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my job. That's not just deal with difficult people, Miss B. I'm like, great. But these are one-off situations. They're all odd, but yeah, they're all one-offs. So we hadn't even had a chance to talk about this situation yet. I'm in my office reading these emails. And then all of a sudden, my front desk agent runs to the back and says, Miss B. I'm like, what? She's like, lady in 614 just called Karen a bitch in the lobby. I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, she just went up to the sales team and just started going off on them. (laughs) What? And I go out there and look, like, what is going on? And I see crazy lady talking to two of our sales managers. And they're like, looking at her like this and Karen is already gone and I see her coming to the back office so I run back there I'm like what just happened she's like crazy ladies out there and like but but what happened and she's like we were walking we you know that we just got in we were filling up our water bottles and the lady stopped the three of them from walking and said are you guys managers here to which they responded yes (laughs) question mark begrudgingly Mm -hmm. so then which the lady started going off the director of sales just went nope and walked away because she was talking to the other ladies and she just walked away because she was talking to other ladies. But apparently when like Karen was walking away, she went, bitch. And then she walked away. Did she, she like, just keep walking? Oh, yeah. Yeah. She was just like, okay, something's going on here. To which the little sales girls were like, 
sitting there nodding, listening, and then they finally get free and they come into the back. I'm like, what happened? They're like, she was just going off about random things. She's saying she's going to sue us. She's telling us how she's being treated poorly and this and that. And we're like, what? And then the general manager comes out. She's like, what just happened? And I'm like, crazy lady just called Karen a bitch. And, and my boss is like, that's it. She storms out. By the way, it's like 8.30 in the morning. We haven't even had stand-up yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's early. early. day has even started. <laughs> the general manager walks out there and says, like, which one is she? And we're like, one in the skirt. And older woman, long skirt, holding a bag. And she goes out there and I don't hear any of the conversation, but she takes her and she walks with her. And when my general manager comes back, we're like, what happened? She's like, I told her she needs to leave and she's not welcome here anymore. I'm like, okay. And she turns my desk agent and it's like, do not let her come at you anymore. You don't even engage with her. Just walk away. Miss B, call the police if she continues. I said, oh, shoot. You got it. And make sure we add notes to her reservation or profile line or right? whatever. Right. Oh, line 17 was like <laughs> so novels. many. Novels. Novels. Is that the notes section? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, you got it, boss. I'm like, that's one of the things I do best. And uh, so the lady is just sitting in a chair in the lobby area, just rancing at another guest. But it looks like it's her friend or something. But the lady like is kind of like watching her, like nodding. Like you could, you're like, okay, that's not her friend. Mm -hmm. And I'm about to say something. And I turn to Karen. And I'm like, what's she doing? And she's like, oh, she asked me to call her a cab. My desk agent's like, okay. So she tries to call her a cab. In our area, there's not a lot of cabs. And just nowadays, you know, cabs aren't that popular unless you're like right next to an airport. Mm -hmm. So she tries to call a cab company. They say, nope, we don't have anyone in that area. A second cab company. Nope, we don't have anyone in that area. So I'm up there figuring out what's going on. She's like, I've called two different cab companies. Nobody will come out. And I was like, well, let's try one more. And I'm, I'm looking and I was like, yeah, try this one. And I was like, I'll go tell the lady to let her know like what's going on. So I'm being nice. I'm keeping her informed. So I walk over there and she looks at me and she's like, where's my cab? Why are you guys keeping me here? And I'm like, whoa. Well, I thought she was going to look at you and go, no, no, not today. <laughs> I was, wasn't was sure what to expect, but she's like, starts yelling me in front of this other lady. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I'm coming over here to tell you about that. Would you like me to tell you about what we're doing for you? She's like, yes. And I was like, well, we've just tried to call two different cab companies. They are not in the area. My agent, who you can see she's on the phone right now. She's currently working on calling a third. But do you have alternate means of transportation? Because it doesn't look like cabs really want to come to this area. You got a rideshare app? Like, mm -hmm. And she's I, like, can, I can random, recommend a couple. That's ridiculous. Then it just becomes like incoherent. She's just saying she's going to sue us, this and that. I was like, okay, okay. I was like, look, you need to take this down a few notches. We are doing our best to assist you. And by you yelling at us saying we're doing X, Y, and Z, it's not helping you. It's not helping me. We're, we're trying to get you a cab. We're currently working on that. She goes off saying, I just got out of the hospital. To which she lifts up her arm and points at a hospital van. She's like, I had a mental breakdown and you're trying to make me have another one. I'm going to have another one. And I look at her and I said, ma'am, would you like me to call 911? With the most serious, Stop. with the most serious concerned look on my face. Do I need to call 911? She looks at me kind of stunned. She's like, what? No. And I said, because what you're telling me right now is that you have been in mental crisis and that you're about to have another mental crisis. And for your safety, I think that would be the best decision right now. If you feel like you're about to have a mental breakdown. She's like, uh, no, no, I'm fine. I was like, are you sure? And she's like, yes. And I'm like, okay, then why don't you take a seat? And again, I'm going to need you to lower your voice or I'm going to have to call because I'm afraid you may be in mental crisis if you continue to yell. And she's like, <laughs> it sits down. And so then I talk to the agent. I'm like, what did the third cap company say? It's like, they can be here in 30 minutes. I'm like, great. 29 minutes too long. Right. So I walk back over to the lady Ugh. and I'm like, all right, we just got off the phone with someone who can send a cab. They'll be here in 30 minutes. And she's like, that's not soon enough. I have a court appointment I need to get to. I said, okay, well, I, I don't have another means of transportation for you. The cab will be here in 30 minutes. This is ridiculous. And I just turn. I said, let me know if there's anything else you need. And I turn and walk away while she's yelling. And I go back to the desk and my desk agent's just like giggling. She's like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm calling the police. <laughs> like, that's it. I'm like, Did you call I'm done. the police? Oh, yeah. So. What? Wait, that escalated so quickly. I was done. I thought she was going to end up calling an ambulance. 
Yeah. So call mental immediately. crises. Yep. Immediately walk over to the desk, call non emergency 911, and I say, Hi, there's a woman who I believe isn't having a mental crisis in the lobby. <gasps> She's just stated. You called mental health mm-hmm. on someone. I said, She just stated that she just got out of the hospital. She's wearing a hospital band. She said she had a mental breakdown and that she currently feels like she's about to have another. I am worried for her safety. And she's currently screaming and yelling in the lobby, threatening staff. So I need you to respond as soon as possible. They said, okay. And, and they did. How quickly did they respond? Did they Not get there before enough. the cab? Yeah. Not quick enough. Yeah. I, as I did that, then she goes outside. I'm like, oh, she's probably going to be gone. I look to see where she is. She's across like the, I don't explain. it's like a big driveway. And she's standing in the middle of it, talking to some guy, ranting and raving. And I'm like, oh, who's the guy? Poor dude. No. Rando. She just keeps finding randos and talking to them because the lady she said but was her friend on like the couch is sitting there without there. her. No, it's a it's a guy out there smoking. I'm just like, oh man, go back to my desk because that's where the camera screen is. And I sit there and I watch. And then when I see her start to come back in, then I go back up to the desk and I tell the yeah. desk agent, I'll handle it. Go hide. Go hide. <laughs> go and eat I your see her and storming up. TikTok in the back. <laughs> Literally. I see her storming up, so I stand there ready with my smile, and she walks in holding a phone in one hand and 20s in another. She recorded? What? <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on? So she comes up, and she's like, I am recording this. Yeah. I just want to show you. I am suing you. You are refusing to get me a cab to go to my court appointment. I've tried to give you money. And she's like showing the 20s in front of the camera, and you are refusing. And my face just looks like the most annoyed are you kidding kind of face and i'm looking at her and when she's done i said are you done and she's like you are refusing i said ma'am we just spoke five minutes ago you have a cab on the way that'll be here in 30 minutes and i said i can't make it come any faster is there anything i could do for you in the meantime she's like ah and like storms out and then i'm like where are the police 8 50 in the morning right has stand-up happened yet nope still (laughs) all happening pretty quickly and then I see the police roll up. And I'm like, thank God. And I go out there, but she's gone. Oh, they missed her by Poof. minutes. The police come in and I'm like, she was right here like a minute ago. But then I see the guy she was talking to. And I was like, hey. And he looks at me and I'm like, the lady, your friend, the one you were talking to. He's like, no, no, no. I did not know her. I'm like, okay, where is she? He's like, I ordered her an Uber. I'm like, ah. And I said, ooh, wouldn't have done that. But. Your money. And he's like kind of like looking, but looking at the police, looking at do, me. It had nothing to do with the hotel. The cab actually didn't get there first. No. A stranger called yeah. her an Uber. Yeah. And my guess is she gave him cash or something. But so the police said basically, okay, we'll call us if she gets back. You know, they don't care. Then they leave. And then I'm going back in and the guy's just staring at his phone. And I'm like, are you okay, sir? And he's like, yeah, the Uber hasn't moved in a while. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, they left, but now it's just stopped on the side somewhere and it's not moving. I'm like, yeah, I probably wouldn't have done that. But uh, it was nice of you. Let us know if you need anything. Why would you pay for someone's Uber if they can get in like with the register? Because they're drunk. But like. No, this guy wasn't. It's freaking 842 in the morning. She was. No, she was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But y'all have been in plenty of Ubers where like you put in your destination, but then you're in the Uber and like, ah, can you stop here? Ah, actually, can we go yeah, here? That's why he was stupid. Yeah. And I told him, so I was like, like, wouldn't have done that. So I wonder how much that Uber like originally cost him and how much it ended up costing yeah. him. I don't know. It's, it's, sounds like a lot like his problem. Yeah, you want to know, know a fun fact I found out after all this? Oh. Yeah. During stand up, I'm letting them know everything that just happened. It's officially 9.02 a.m. It's officially 9.02 a.m. <laughs> and one of the sales ladies is like, yeah, her lawyer didn't seem like he wanted anything to do with her. And I went, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, her lawyer was here. And I was like, what? what? Uh huh. It's like, yeah, it was that guy that like ran up, basically just ran out. He wanted nothing to do with her. She's telling us, I'm going to sue you, this and that. She has a lawyer. But he's a part of whatever's going on at court. He literally saw her like making a fuss and was like, I just want to pay for my room. It was like really discreet, paid for his room, dipped out and ran to court. Didn't give her a ride. Didn't do none of that. But they were at the hotel together. Yeah. <gasps> but they had two different rooms. Yeah, but yeah. I think she really was there for some kind of court thing. And apparently she had a lawyer and he wanted nothing to do with her. As he should. Good for him. I wonder why she was going to court. She Probably something, something with her behavior. Oh, yeah. But I warned the cops and I was like, just so you know, she was on her way to court and the court is literally next door to the police station. And I was like, so you're probably going to get called across the street. And they're like, great. <laughs> Don't they have guys stationed in courtrooms though? Yeah. yeah. Sheriff, Bailiff. Sheriff's department. Right? So then. Sheriffs run the courts. So then 
Th- there's more? Yeah. I've said so then like four times. <laughs> so then make I was like, okay, we're good. And then <laughs> she's six. gone. And they went, yeah, she's checked out. But her belongings are in the belt closet. Great. Okay. So she's coming back after court. <laughs> Do we know what time she's coming back? I think she said around three. Great. I get to see her again. Like I'll still be here at work. <laughs> Great. And I'm like waiting all day. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. Can't wait to kick her out and call the police again. And wait and wait. Nothing happens. Five o'clock rolls around. After five, I'm like, well, I'm done. <laughs> so I pass it on to my next manager. I'm like, here you go. And she Deuces. Goes, Great. So I'm waiting around all night. I told my husband everything that happened as soon as I got home. He's like, oh, so we're expecting a call. I'm like, oh, yeah, we are. I'm sitting there waiting for that call. But surprisingly, the manager handled it. No call, just a text. Be like, yep, just kicked her out of the bar. And (laughs) apparently she came straight in, didn't grab her bags, went straight to the bar, ordered food and drink, to which one of the team members recognized her, told the manager who went over there was like, ma'am, you're Miss Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're not welcome here. The general manager spoke with you earlier, as did the director of front office. You need to get your belongings and you need to leave. Well, can I at least eat my food? You can take it to go. I'll have them put it in a to-go box. I'll bring your luggage card out. Are you? Have you already Good called your ride? For them. Kicked her right out. That is beautiful. Do I know who this manager is? Yeah. Okay, this manager is kind of scary. Like she can be kind of scary when she and needs intimidating. Business, she's business. Yeah. And was like, nope, out. She Who's in a, a box? She's a no, that I'm thinking of yeah. no BS kind of person. Yep. Okay. Kicked her right out, and I'm like, you didn't need to call the police. She's like, no. Kicked her right out. <laughs> what? Was this like a, like a pretty dainty woman? She was small. She was so like this manager towered over her and she was probably wearing heels too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So that was my day yesterday. Oh, boy. And I used a bill line yesterday. Ooh. Ooh. So talking. Tell me more. <laughs> Say it slower. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm talking to the team yesterday and they're all like, oh, you know, we do feel bad, you know, that she's going through this. She just got out of the hospital. And I said, look, that's all fine and dandy. And she's going through that. And I do empathize for her. And you know what? She does need to be someplace, but we're not the facility for her. Kudos (laughs) to you, Miss B. And he said, she does need to check in somewhere, but it's not this hotel. It's a hospital a mile down. Anyways, I used a bill thing. It's It's a nice way to like segue people out. Yeah. Like, I agree that, you know, you do need to be somewhere where people can take care of you. And that's, we're not it. So that was yesterday. Wow. What a Wednesday. What a Wednesday indeed. Happy hump day. Well, yeah. Good thing tomorrow is Friday, <laughs> but in hospitality, our Fridays are never our Fridays. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm doing something kind of bad on Saturday. And Ooh, good I for you. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to go to a water polo game Saturday afternoon at Shocker. three. <laughs> I know, shocker, sports. I want to go watch sports. So I want to go to a water polo game at three in a city over. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? Do you have a doctor's appointment? Uh, on a Saturday. Oh. And so what I did is I scheduled someone to open that I know will not open. They're normally a Monday through Friday. And I scheduled them to work a Saturday. Because they're going to call out? So then yeah, they Liz are. has to cover so early. Yeah. Because so this associate saw the schedule and was like, hey, so like Saturday, like I am babysitting. And I was like, look, if you can't make it on Saturday, I totally understand. I'll try and get it covered. Do you want to work a six instead of an eight hour shift? And they were like, no, like I have to babysit like until midnight. Like I I really don't want to work at 530 in the morning. All right. Well, you know, I'll try and get your shift covered if you really can't make it. And if all else fails, I guess I'll have to open for you. Okay. That's the way. Right? That's how you do it. Okay. So I am opening Saturday morning and I'm going to try and leave at noon. Love that. And go to my water polo game at three. And this associate goes to like her other manager in the department. It's like, I'm worried. Like I'm going to get in trouble. Like is Liz going to get mad if I call out? And this manager knows exactly what I'm doing. And he's like, no, like you're doing Liz a solid by like being scheduled and effectively quote, quote, calling out. So she has to open. So she's off early. She gets to do what she wants to do in the afternoon. Huh. But it doesn't count against her attendance. I'm not, I'm going to pretend it never happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. If anyone says, oh my God, you had to open. I'm going to say, we had a call out. No, don't say that you had a call what, out. What should I do? I would say I completely forgot about her 
Like it was my fault. Inability yeah. to work a morning shift like, on a Saturday. I'm gonna put it on me, and I had to cover. Yeah, yes. if it's it's my yeah. mistake. I'm the I leader for the her department. I against her availability. Totally forgot. Like, Slipped my mind. I had to cover. I, it. I couldn't up. find anyone. I need to do it. I will Sorry. take responsibility for that one. I had to cover it. Bummer. <laughs> I, I'm stoked. It's gonna stoked. be a great day. You're wild. Only you would be excited about getting to go into work at five in the flipping morning. Opening like sucks, except for waking up early. It is a good chance to interact with people I don't normally see who are at property at six, seven a.m. You're swimmers. Okay, yeah. Like and the normal like workout people. Yeah. That I, I don't ever see. Any who's it's been great, guys. It's great to see you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was a big yawn. Agreed. We'll, we'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. All right, on that note, I'll close this out. Make sure, cheers. Make cheers. sure to follow us on socials. Um, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We stream our episodes on YouTube. Am I missing any? No, but as far as streaming options go, there are some very obscure platforms that we are on. Really? Yeah, that stuff good. that I had never heard of. Interesting. Oh. Well, that is Sounds proof. Creepy. We are wherever bit. you can listen to podcasts. Even yep. ones we don't even know about. We're out there. We are out there. And if you have a story or just want to say, hey, what's up to the TFTSI fam, make sure to email us at OG3 at TFTSI.com. That is OG, the number three at TFTSI.com. Liz, you are such a professional. <laughs> you are. <laughs> So thanks for listening, and we will see you again in two weeks. Bye, team. Bye.